Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. We are now in lecture 6, Transaction Management Part 7. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain the database recovery and why it is needed, explain the undo and redo recovery mechanism, describe the log file and checkpoint backup mechanism, and explain the deferred and immediate update and shadow paging recovery technique. The storage of data generally includes four different types of media with an increasing degree of reliability such as main memory, magnetic disk, magnetic tape and optical disk. Main memory is a primary volatile storage that does not survive system crashes. Normally, data will be backup in a non-volatile storage with independent failure modes such as optical disk. No matter what, you need to assume that your data will corrupt one day and you need a mechanism to reconstruct back the data loss. That's what we call as database recovery, a process of restoring database to a correct state in the event of a failure. There are few types of failure which are the first one system crashes due to hardware or software errors resulting in loss of main memory. Next, media failure, such as head crashes or unreadable media, resulting in the loss of parts of secondary storage. Then the third one is application software error, such as logical error in the program that is accessing the database, which cause one or more transactions to fail. Then we have natural physical disasters, such as fires, floods, earthquakes or power failures. Next is carelessness or unintentional destruction of data or facilities by operators or users. Last one is sabotage or intentional corruption or destruction of data, hardware or software facilities. These are the recovery facilities. The first one is backing up the database. On a regularly scheduled basis, a company's databases must be backed up or copied. The copy version must be put away from original copy. The second one is maintaining a journal, or we say to have a log file. It is to keep track the changes to the data such as insertion, update and deletion. The third one is checkpoint facility, which enables update to database in progress to be made permanent. The last one is recovery manager, which allows DBMS to restore database to consistent state following a failure. The particular recovery procedure to be used is dependent on the extent of the damage that has occurred to the database. We consider two cases here. The first one, if the database has been extensively damaged. For example, a disk head crash has occurred and destroyed the database. Then it is necessary to restore the last backup copy of the database and reapply the update operations of committed transactions using the log file. If the database has not been physically damaged but has become inconsistent, for example, the system crashed while transactions were executing, then it is necessary to undo the changes that caused the inconsistency. It may also be necessary to redo some transactions to ensure that the updates they performed have reached secondary storage. The first recovery technique here is shadow paging. This scheme maintains two page tables during life of a transaction, current page and shadow page. When transaction starts, two pages are the same. During transaction, current page table records all updates to database. When transaction completes, current page table becomes shadow page table. Then, if another update happen in the database, it will write to a new current page. When it is done, the current page turn into another shadow page. Shadow page table is never changed thereafter and is used to restore database in event of failure. Next is deferred update. Updates are not written to the database until after a transaction has reached its commit point. If transactions were committed when we are having a failure, we need to redo the transaction from start as we are not sure whether the updates reach database or not. But if it not yet committed, just do nothing as the updates will only return to database once the transaction is committed. Let's consider this recovery timeline. There is a checkpoint and also failure in the system. If we take a look at transaction 1, it finished before checkpoint. 
In any recovery techniques, if transaction is finished before checkpoint, there's no need to redo or undo for the recovery. Data is considered safe. For transaction 2, it started before checkpoint and finished before failure. Since it is committed, we need to redo transaction 2 from start. Same goes with transaction 3. Since it has been committed, means we need to redo the transaction from start. If we take a look here, transaction 4 and 5 are ignored in this case since both of the transactions are not yet finished. They are effectively cancelled and rolled back because none of their write operations were recorded in the database under the deferred update protocol. For immediate update, database is immediately updated by the transaction operation during the execution of the transaction even before it reaches commit point. You need to redo updates of committed transactions following a failure from the checkpoint. If it's unfinished, you need to undo from most recent log. Consider the same recovery timeline if you take a look transaction 1 finished before checkpoint. Means there's no recovery needed for transaction 1. For transaction 2, since the transaction has committed, all the updates before checkpoint are saved. Hence, we need to redo transaction 2 starting from the checkpoint. Same goes with transaction 3. Since it has been committed, we need to redo transaction 3 starting also from the checkpoint. For transaction 4 and 5, since it is not yet finished, we need to undo backwards from most recent log record. As the transaction may have performed several changes to an item, the writes are undone in reverse order. This is to guarantee that the database is restored to its state prior to the start of the transaction. So that's all for now. See you again in the next chapter. Thank you.